Hello everybody, this is Patrick Dennis with Eureka. Uh, and today I wanna to take a little bit of time to walk through a demonstration of how Eureka can work with Field Service Lightning. We've done several of these videos before, which I can link to in the description below, but the one that I wanna talk about today is how Eureka can work with Field Service Lightning as it pertains to medical devices. We get a lot of questions from customers and, um, and other people in the Salesforce ecosystem curious about how Eureka might be able to support this this concept of I'm going out to fix a piece of equipment or I have a piece of equipment in a, in a medical facility or at a clinic that needs repair. So how might we use Eureka and Field Service Lightning together? That's what we're going to talk about today. So for those of you really quick who have no idea what Eureka is or, or what we're all about, Eureka is a Salesforce native forms, assessments, inspections, surveys, and audit application. Um, again, it's a Salesforce native app. And what we really do is we enable mobile workforces who need to go out into the field and collect complicated information, fill out complex forms while they're doing their jobs in the field and perhaps even offline. Uh, we allow people to go out, collect information, and even be guided through a process um, to basically facilitate uh, the improvement of them doing their job, to improve the quality of the data that's collected for the organization. So that's what we're all about. And as it pertains to Field Service Lightning, um, Eureka is really great because we always like to say that Field Service Lightning is a really great solution for basically getting uh, a technician, the right technician to the right location at the right time uh, for the right kind of job. But when they get there, they might need to fill out a, a complicated form or a series of forms. And that's where Eureka can really come in, in handy. So Eureka and the Field Service mobile app can work really well together to accomplish that goal. So the demo that I'm going to go through today, we're going to pretend as though we're a company called Kinder Healthcare. Kinder Healthcare basically creates medical imaging equipment. So think about it, ultrasound machines, et cetera. Um, and what we've noticed as a part of our field service organization is that there is a piece of equipment that is out in the field that has uh, reported is not, not functioning correctly. So we need to dispatch a technician out to uh, basically fix this, um, this issue. So the demo flow that I'm going to go through today is I'm going to route a technician uh, using field service lightning. And then when we get actually on the job, we're going to check in and we're going to complete some complex procedures while we're there using the Eureka mobile app. Then we'll check out and then we'll come back into Salesforce and we'll see how all the information has been put right on the Salesforce platform. So with that said, let's jump over into my Salesforce environment and we'll see how this can work. So on the left hand side of the screen, what you have is my field service dispatcher console. And on the right hand side of the screen, you have my iPhone, which has the field service mobile app pulled up uh, with the appointments that I might have as a technician today. So what we can see here is as a technician, uh, I have one service appointment today for on site service. Um, and so what I can do is uh, interacting with the field service mobile app, I can click on that uh, service appointment. I can see where I need to go for this particular location. I can see what time my service appointment is going to start. I can even interact with information related to the contact. So if I wanna place a phone call or send a text message to the person that's on site waiting for me, I can do all of that. So there's a lot of functionality that's, off, that's offered to us as a part of the field service mobile application. But again, as soon as I arrive on site, what I can do is I can open up this little button in the bottom here, which is my action menu. And this allows me to do several different things um, as a part of my my day to day work. But the button that we're focusing on for this demo is the one right in the middle that says guided procedures. What this is going to do is it's going to take us actually over into the Eureka mobile app where right away we're prompted with a screen where the technician can check in. Again, this is when they've gotten out of their truck. Uh, they're walking on site and they, this is actually when we're about to start doing our work. So when they arrive there, we see that this particular job uh, is waiting for me to check in. So I can click check in. This is great because we're grabbing the latitude and longitude. We're grabbing the date and time stamp that this check in took place. All right. So at this point where we are is we've landed on a screen that has a list of the forms that I need to complete as a part of my job today. So this could be a single form or it could be a dozen forms, uh, just depending on the job, depending on the use case. Uh, there's a, quite a bit of flexibility that it comes as a part of preparing the right kinds of forms for any particular type of work that we're doing. 
Um, but in this case, it looks like we have two forms that we need to fill out. The first one is a COVID-19 pre-work assessment. These forms have been created for kinder healthcare uh, so that before anybody goes on site, uh, they have to basically check off that they're wearing all the right protective equipment. Um, and so if we jump in right there, we can see right away uh, that the form is very easy to fill out. It's just basically confirming that we're wearing gloves. It's confirming that we're wearing a mask and it's confirming that we have the proper feet coverings. Uh, as well as some other information related to, you know, if we felt sick in the past 48 hours or if we visited a hospital in the past 14 days, right? So it's a pretty simple form. So before I even walk in the building, I can go ahead and click submit there. That's the first item that I had to do. And now we can see that the, the, the COVID-19 pre-work assessment is, has been submitted. And next, I'm actually going to go in and fix this particular machine. And now in this case, we have an ultrasound machine that needs to be repaired. It seems as though that the monitor is not working. So we'll go ahead and open up this form and we'll get to work. The first thing that we'll notice is that these forms uh, are pre-populated. You saw this actually in the previous example as well as right here in front of you. This, this field right here on the screen in front of you, this work order subject, that's a field in Salesforce and we're actually pulling in that data into this form here. So if I want to actually change the work order subject or change the work order description, I might be able to say, you know, instead of on-site service, we'll call this uh, ultrasound monitor repair. Any field that I change here inside of a Eureka form that's linked to a field inside of Salesforce, as soon as I submit this form, all that information is going to get updated back in the system. So it's really handy for us to be able to manipulate data inside the Salesforce environment right here from the Eureka form. If I wanted to enter a work order description, so maybe I wanted to say something like, um, I've arrived on site and we'll start repairing the equipment now, period. There we go. So that's just another way that we could enter some basic information here into this field. Next, we'll indicate the date and time that we actually arrived on site. And we can even see the first and last name of the contact that's going to be waiting for us. Next, we'll get to the point in this in time where we're actually looking at this piece of equipment. So we've arrived at this ultrasound machine. We're inspecting the machine. We're taking a look at it. And now we're going to gather some basic information before we proceed with fixing it. So the first thing is I've got the serial number of the device pre-populated in here, just like we pre-populated data from the work order. Um, but this is coming from the asset. So what I can do is I just maybe need to verify this uh, the device serial number here. So I just have this sample barcode that we'll go ahead and scan here. And as a part of that, it looks like the barcode does match and the serial number has been verified. So we can go ahead and continue on with our work here. That was one example of the conditional display logic that we can set up in Eureka, showing and hiding information based on answers to previous questions. Uh, you'll see much more of that here throughout the demo. Next, we might want to capture some photos of the device uh, before we begin work. In this case, I just have this sample photo of an ultrasound machine here in front of me. So we'll grab a quick photo of that machine before we begin work. And for any photo that's captured in the Eureka mobile application, you can jump in and right away you can kind of mark it up and say, you know what, uh, this is the part that's not working you know, properly. So we'll point that out here uh, and then we'll move on with our work. If we want to take several photos, we could certainly do that here. You're not restricted to just one, but for the sake of time, we'll just move on. So in this case, we'll say that uh, you know the video test patterns aren't clear. Um, so we'll move on to say uh, another section here. So as you could see there, this is another example of that conditional display logic. Because I answered one question one way, we'll open up a new subsequent question or a whole section with new questions. Um, so we'll say, you know, the standby button is illuminated, uh, the button is orange, uh, but there's not a picture on the monitor. And after checking the cables, there's still not a picture on the monitor. So this is a way, again, you guys, this is not just uh, mobile forms really here. We're talking about guiding the mobile workforce through a process and helping them do their job better. So being able to show them these kinds of questions in the series that we do can really help them ensure that, uh, that they're following the proper procedure. So in this case, we'll say, you know, the monitor needs to be replaced. So let's just confirm that we have the parts on hand. So we'll check off that we have these three things and then we'll proceed on to actually repair the monitor. 
So now at this step, we're gonna go ahead and take off that monitor and we're gonna in fact show the people the steps that they need to know in order to do this properly. So again, this is all about mobile workforce enablement, technician guidance, uh, as opposed to just collecting data. And here you can even see we have a moving image, a GIF that shows you what this looks like. So the first thing we'll do is we'll remove all four screws. Uh, then we'll unplug both the cords on the monitor and we'll indicate that that's complete. And then finally, we'll just take that monitor off um, and we'll mark that that's complete as well. The next piece is when we mount the new monitor, we'll wanna make sure that we're configuring the proper electrical. So let's go ahead and plug in those cords. Again, we're showing how that monitor is gonna be coming together here. And then finally, we'll just take a temperature of the computing tower just to make sure that it's good. Uh, so here we'll say that it's 160 degrees Fahrenheit after using our thermometer. Uh, and in fact, what we're seeing here is that the computing tower is too hot. Uh, it needs to be less than 150 degrees, so we need to replace that. And so this is what that looks like to have that new fan uh, reassembled. So we can go ahead and on an ad hoc basis, we can replace that cooling fan because we need to. Next, we'll take a photo of our completed work. So what does it look like after the, uh, the machine's all said and done? Uh, and so we can go ahead and take a photo of, uh, of the machine after we're done with this and we'll mark it up, same, indicate that we're complete here. Indicate the date and time that the service was restored and then say, all is well, the monitor is now working. We'll say that it's now working here. And then finally, we'll just get some customer feedback. So we'll type in James's name here and we'll indicate whether or not he was satisfied, very satisfied, or not satisfied at all. Um, and he'll say, the service appointment went really well, period, I'm very happy. Grab a quick signature and finish things up here. Finally, we have our work order line items, which we want to disposition. So we'll jump into the first work order line item there. We successfully completed replacing the monitor and we also successfully completed collecting the old monitor for disposal. So both of those items are now done and we can click submit. Now what this is gonna do is if we're online, it's gonna submit all that data back to Salesforce, uh, updating all the records and saving all the information in the system. Um, if we're offline, it's just gonna store all this data locally um, where we, uh, it'll, it'll just sit on our device until we reestablish connectivity and then only then will, uh, will the information then be synced back to Salesforce. So at this point I can check out and then jump right back over to my field service application uh, and finish on with my day, perhaps restatusing this appointment um, and then moving on to the next service appointment that I might have to be working on. So as I jump back over into Salesforce, what we'll notice here is if I visit that work order record that we were working on and I refresh my page, what we'll see here is that the data has now been updated in the system. So the first thing I'd draw your attention to is that the fields that we updated while we were using the Eureka mobile app are now changed here on the work order. And the same is true with the work order line items over to the right, where the statuses have changed from not started and now they're completed. But if we want to actually look at the full set of forms that were completed, there's a related list on the work order as well that we can reference. So we can see both our COVID-19 assessment is here on the form, or here on the work order, as well as our ultrasound monitor repair. And if we click into either of these records, what we'll notice is that the entire form as it was completed on the mobile application is now visible here inside of Salesforce. So all the data points that were collected, uh, all the photos that were gathered. So we can pull up those images here and very easily view those. So every data point that we gathered from the mobile app is now here inside of Salesforce. It's all reportable. You can automate off of any of this information. Uh, we can manage approval processes. As you can see here on the top, if we want to send email alerts as a result of this form being submitted. So there's a lot of power in business process that can be managed as a result of this form being completed. 
We also have some important Eureka insights here uh, that have been generated as a result of this machine being, uh, being worked on. So the first thing is that we've identified that there's a very satisfied customer. Uh, maybe we can send a follow-up thank you uh, as a part of that, just uh, being able to better identify those customers who are really happy with our service. And those discoveries are actually their own records inside of Salesforce. So you can see here, these discoveries are generated as a result of the certain questions being answered in a certain way in the form. And you can manage extremely powerful business processes as a part of this. Secondly, we're plugging into Salesforce Einstein. So you can see we've got Einstein Vision, where we're using an image recognition model to understand whether or not the machine has proper spacing, which perhaps is important for this type of machine. And the other thing is that we're using Einstein Sentiment. So we're running the free text of his uh, James Amos's uh, customer feedback through a sentiment model and understanding if it's a positive or negative comment as well. The final thing that I'll say is, uh, how do all these forms get created is a common question that we receive. And the answer is that you can adjust these forms right here inside of Salesforce. So we can visit our form templates tab in the system and immediately jump in and edit and copy for a new version. And what this looks like is we're taken right away to our drag and drop editor uh, right here inside of Salesforce that allows us to build these forms. So as you can see here, this is the screen where we can go and drag and drop brand new questions onto the canvas uh, in the event that we want to start adding questions to this ultrasound monitor repair. So one question we might ask is, you know, was the point of contact uh, there to greet you when you arrived? And perhaps this is a yes or no question. We have a lot of different question types that Eureka has to offer. But in this case, it's a yes or no, and we'll just click save and we're good to go there. So it's that easy to drag new questions onto the editor here, save and publish our form, and immediately now this is the version that's made available to users out in the field, and the older version is then deprecated. So it's very, very easy for us to apply some change management to this process and ensure that the right kinds of forms are up to date, um, and uh, specific to the right kinds of work that, uh, that they're designed for. So it's a very easy process for configuring these forms inside of Salesforce as well. So that's all for today. That's what it looks like to use Field Service Lightning and Eureka together um, when it comes to the specific use case of servicing medical devices, medical equipment in the field. Um, so that's all for now. Feel free to visit our website at eureka.io if you have questions. Uh, you can certainly visit us there to learn more.